What images come to your mind when you think about Russian culture? Perhaps it's their colorful and extravagant architecture, or their passionate, intense dancers, or maybe their vibrant music. Of course, there's far more to Russian culture than just a few of these items, but in this segment of Frame, we learn a little bit more about it. Joining me is the Artistic Director for the International Academy for Russian Music, Art, and Culture, Oleg Timofeev. Oleg, thank you so much and welcome to Frame. Uh, hello, it's a great <laughs> pleasure to be here. Um, <laughs> Uh, when you say, uh, when you think of Russian culture, you know, the guitar is probably the last thing you would think. You know, you immediately think of guitars when you think Spain. True. But with Russia, you have this triangular balalaika, maybe some people know, maybe some people have seen it in Dr. Zhivago, the long movie, yeah. the old one, and it ends and starts with the balalaika because that's the symbol of Russia. However, very few people know that uh, in the 19th century and partially in the 18th century, Russia had its own guitar tradition. And to promote that, at some point, we started uh, the Academy of Russian Music here in Iowa City. Started doing music on my own, first kind of guided by my mother, then taking uh, lessons from a very charismatic uh, guitar teacher, Camille Frauci. But uh, he was a charismatic, very strong, very interesting teacher. And mm -hmm. he just gave me that love for music, uh, you know, like seriousness with which I studied every note. And with that, after parting with him, I started studying early music, which was lute, you know, re Renaissance. At that time, the last thing I was thinking was Russian music or anything Russian. You know, Russia, r Russian culture was pressed on us so hard. There was, it was such, so much part of Soviet propaganda that mm -hmm. I wanted to be not associated with it. And I was very interested in everything foreign, Western, Renaissance far away and that precisely what brought me to the West. My first trip abroad happened in 1989 here to Iowa City yeah. because a local musicologist found my uh, either my work interesting or my person charming or something between or combination of both but I ended up in, at the University of Iowa as artist in residence and uh, as I was kind of more and more living here and just understanding who I, re I really am. Mm -hmm. Russian has become more and more important to me. Russian culture became very important at both universities. I took some classes in Russian literature that gave me a completely different angle at my own culture. And at the end, I chose a Russian topic for my dissertation. And that topic was the Russian guitar, mm. which is a completely different instrument having seven main strings. Just sort of a little demonstration with a concrete song. Okay. Um, well, the main thing about the Russian guitar is that it's tuned to a chord. So if you come to uh, any guitar, six string guitar, and if you strum all the strings, they don't sound very sonorously. They don't sound like a chord. Uh, here's a song that I'll just play the beginning. This is called uh, God Save the Tsar. It was the official Russian anthem. And uh, it is used in Tchaikovsky's 1812 overture, and therefore many Americans know it. In fact, more Americans than Russians because, because of the usage of this. This was a forbidden tune during the um, Soviet times. So because of that, the overture was rarely performed. Of course, I studied the flute growing up, play the piano a little bit. Are there any differences between the composition of notes as they're played here? I, um, uh, well, there's no, no major differences except that Russian guitarists created a very unique way of notating fingering, which was when you see something like 
7 slash 5, uh, 7 slash 3, it means that you're playing the third finger on the seventh fret. So when you see it, but since you know the note, you can figure out on what string. So uh, a lot of music is very heavily fingered. Uh, the Russian guitarists used their thumb like that, on, which is only used on rock and roll guitar. Like uh, classical oh, guitars don't guitar. use it. Mm -hmm. Well, otherwise the thumb, there's no use for the thumb, the thumb at all. Uh -huh. And there's a sign for that. Sometimes you encounter it in music. Any other differences? Not really. In the, sh no. the sheet music. No, the sheet American music is the same. Um, uh, yeah, the sheet music is the same. It's just the the textures of the uh, of the song. What about this top? Well, those are you use occasionally for the. Here's an example of a Russian song, like, and you can hear peculiarity of the Russian guitar. Maybe here. It's a very unique kind of mode of expression. You know, we had two main uh, types of songs, the mm -hmm. dragging songs and the dance songs. Mm -hmm. So this is a dragging song. There is nothing like that in, you know, non-Slavic non folklore. And I don't even think that every Slavic nation has something like that. The song that has no clear shape. It's completely ad libitum, kind of very free. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's probably associated with our endless steps and, you know, long roads. It was typical mm -hmm. for a coachman to sing. Uh, uh, the whole nation was extremely, was, was a very singing nation. Fascinating. It's by famous Russian maker Robert Arhusen, who was of uh, Danish lineage, actually. He wasn't Russian-Russian. His father came from Denmark. Mm -hmm. was a very good very good guitar maker. This is, again, this guitar shows this whole history of Russian culture in a sense of a lot of borrowings. Um, it follows the example of Viennese guitar making in Vienna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were making guitars with two necks. Mm -hmm. At that time, a popular kind of music in Vienna was called Schrammel music. And they played music with two violins, clarinet and guitar. And guitar was playing those basses. Like as an oh. some sort of a company, <laughs> uh, and they had even uh, more basses. So th therefore, all the guitars were made with two necks from that point. Uh, the, the fingerboard is completely flat here. It's not like that early guitar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It still has some really unique features, like the double back. It was believed that with with his belly, the guitarist kind of makes the sound dull, and so they just made another. Another back. Oh, I see. One's raised. on top so of the there, other. Yeah, uh -huh. so you, you can take it off. There will be still something left. Ah. I'm going to learn how to play the seven string guitar. Yep, well, so. maybe in, I don't know. Yeah, would you like to we play? We can't Well, sure, I try anything on this show. Where do I start? Well, the thing is, you don't need to do anything. Oh, it's just so harmonious. Exactly. Instantly. This could be a possibility. What else can I do? How do I? Oh, 
That's always a pretty good. Yay! How about I have you take us out? <laughs> You're beautiful playing. <laughs> we'll end the show oh. with you playing. <laughs> Frame is sponsored by Allegra. Click Marketing Solutions. Dial Folio Jewelry.